When it comes to loyalty, none can doubt the quirky Sheikah Impa. But in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, she finally has the chance to prove herself just as equally in battle. Despite being the second character players can unlock, Impa has an extremely complicated playstyle, one with a lot to learn as you go into each fight. But once you master her playstyle, you are certainly in for a treat. Let's dive in and find out what this ninja can do. Impa's regular attack string consists of seven attacks. She will swipe in front of herself, causing multiple more cuts, swipe back to the right, summon four seals in front of herself, send them off forwards with a whirl, disappear and then reappear forwards with a flying cut, dash again with multiple slashes, and then finish with a jumping slam. Each of these attacks actually adds in many additional small attacks, making it remarkably good for charging up her special attack meter just on its own. This can additionally be enhanced through using her unique action and special attack mechanic, but I'll get into all that later on. Let's move on to her other basic actions. Impa's regular dashing attack will have her come to a stop while slashing forwards in front of herself. Her strong dash attack has her spin and throw out her hat like a boomerang, without stopping her movement. As usual, you will want to use the regular attack when you want to stop and dig into a fight, and the strong one to just pick up KOs or special meter charge on the move. Moving on to her aerials, her regular aerial attack string has her do a series of flipping kicks, summoning clones for the second and third attacks. This aerial string always plays out the same, and Impa gets no benefit for having her clones out from her unique mechanic before you Using it. In either case, her strong aerial attack will have her disappear and flow right into a stabbing downwards attack. Next up, let's cover her Sheikah Slate runes. Starting with her stasis, Impa will time lock the enemies just in front of her before automatically entering a stance from which you're meant to start mashing X in order to have her send off a series of attacks. Thankfully, Impa is able to dodge cancel out of this canned animation and start doing any other action that you want to do. Next up, her Cryonis rune will have her raise an ice block just in front of her, and by pressing X again, she's able to jump on it and start a controllable slider around with it, damaging any foe that she runs into during it, while also countering Cryonis' weak moves. For her Magnesis, Impa grabs metal objects nearby and makes a giant sword out of them, doing a giant horizontal slash followed by a vertical slash. Like with other Magnesis runes, if there is nothing to be grabbed, this rune will simply do nothing, but also won't start her cooldown. Last up, Impa's Remote Bomb rune will have her create a vortex just in front of her that will then shoot out a firework bomb that explodes midair. This is pretty easy to use, and despite it seeming to only cover a small area, that single bomb does actually cover a good amount. With all of her basic attacks out of the way, let's move on to her unique action. Impa's unique action requires enemies to be present, and if used, she will auto-target an enemy and place a rune on them, which must then be taken off them in one of two ways. First, if the enemy dies with a rune on them, Impa will absorb it. But the second option is to simply use any of her strong attacks against them, you don't actually have to kill them with it. After doing either of these, Impa will absorb the rune, which will then create a number of ninja clones that will mirror all of her attacks. If you try to place another rune while she has all three absorbed, Impa will instead send out her clones in a large area attack, adding to her ability to clear crowds. These clones stick around for about 40 seconds, with a timer restarting if Impa happens to absorb another rune during their appearance. However, do note that this time limit doesn't stack. Although you could just throw out all three runes and absorb them at the same time, the timer will only be 40 seconds if you do this. On top of just doing more damage, these clones will massively extend Impa's range and the number of hits that she actually does, with each hit also contributing to charging her special attack meter. And the result of all of this is that Impa is able to charge her special attacks faster than any other character in the game. In order to go along with this, Impa's special attack damage is also increased depending on the number of clone runes that she has absorbed. This will also slightly change the animation of each one of her special attacks as well. No matter how many clones you currently have out, using her special attack will always cause Impa to go up one level of rune charge, and this means that if you have all three runes out, she will spin them and go back to only having one rune. However, it's often worth it because the damage that she'll deal with it by having all three runes is substantial. With this in mind, we can finally move over to her strong attacks. 
Impa's first strong attack actually has two different parts. First, she will teleport to a nearby enemy for a slash, and if you elongate this, she will additionally do a quick stab with her weapon. This is a very quick way both to get to an enemy you've hit with a rune and then absorb it with the second blow, or just to teleport towards them if you're trying to close the distance. Note that, unlike her later strong attacks, this one does not benefit at all by having additional clones out. For her second strong attack, Impa will throw out a small group of exploding attacks in front of her, all before using it to lift her into a glide. Any clones that she has will also then fly forward, dropping more exploding kunai, while Impa can fly around and maybe start her aerial attacks if you want to. Impa's third strong attack will have her disappear, bringing clones in for several running attacks before having one more do a big slash, after which Impa reappears to claim her hat. With the more runes you have absorbed, the more clones will appear for the final big attack, and due to Impa being gone during this attack, she's actually very safe while performing it. On top of all of this, the large range that this attack has just makes it a fantastic option in general. For her fourth strong attack, Impa will create a Sheikah Eye, which, if accompanied by clones, will result in more and more lasers that fire out in a focused area. The high damage and speed of this attack make it one of the best for absorbing runes that you've just thrown out. For Impa's fifth strong attack, she will create another Sheikah Sign before dropping a large kunai on the enemies that are trapped within it. Any clones that she has with her will also appear to drop down to the sides of this a little bit later, which will deal additional damage. This attack can be good at locking down a certain foe, but honestly, it usually isn't one of my favorites, just from the extra time that it takes for Impa and her clones to actually do the damaging portion of it. For her final strong attack, we get to one of her best. When used, Impa will summon a massive toad, riding on top of it as it hops forward crushing her enemies, all before Impa hops off to finish with a large aerial slash downwards. The last part of this is actually very important, because this slashing attack is her only move which is able to force out enemy weak points. If you use this strong attack while she has her shadow clones, the area of effect on this move is going to become ridiculous, as each clone also gets their own giant toad to ride, making for an absurd level of destruction and special attack gauge absorption as your small army hops through the battlefield. Both alone or with clones, you are able to extend the number of toad hops that you do by continuing to press the strong attack button as you're attacking. While this move is definitely excellent, I just have to note here that the delayed activation range of the final weak point revealing slash can actually make it a little bit harder to force these out than is typically necessary for a character. Thankfully, Impa is able to rely less on this kind of move due to her being able to charge up her special attack so frequently, and of course, those moves always reveal enemy weak points as well. All in all, I like to think about that last slash from this final strong attack as more of a bonus than a necessary part of her playstyle. If you're having trouble getting someone's weak point to appear with it, you might just be better off using her special attack instead. Well, with all of her normal moves out of the way, let's jump over to her weapon and weapon build options. Impa has three possible weapons, and going from weakest to strongest, they are her Kakariko Kodachi, Faithful Kodachi, and Devoted Kodachi. I'll put a chart up on screen right now to show their hidden level 25 and 30 seals, but for my weapon build recommendation today, I'm going to focus on her Devoted Kodachi. Since this weapon already starts with the square-shaped special attack charge rate seal and the hexagon heal by defeating enemies seal, the best possible build for your weapon attack bonus is to add three more square seals and one more hexagon seal. You might just want to throw on three attack speed seals for those three squares, and while that isn't really a bad idea, as I stated before, Impa doesn't really have a reliable way to bring out enemy weak point gauges, and getting to the moves that do that is usually the point of upping your character's attack speed. Instead of attack speed, in her case, I would actually recommend going for three more special attack charge rate seals, and then adding in any hexagon seal that you like. Hexagon seals mostly just focus on supporting your character, so it's really up to you, although I really like damage per 100 KOs. Alternatively, you could just go with a fourth special attack charge rate seal and just take the lesson damage bonus that you'll get instead. It's really not that much of a difference. And there we have Impa. With everything out of the way, let's wrap everything up and see where she stands.
Early on in Age of Calamity, Impa can really seem like the best character in the cast by a wide margin. And I admit that when I first started to realize how independent and powerful she could be, I was sold on this idea at first. From early game to late game, a player who understands Impa's capabilities is able to handle almost any situation, from clearing out entire crowds in a matter of seconds, to taking on massive bosses one-on-one -on -one while still utilizing her full mechanics. While Impa's playstyle never stops being impressive, as a player comes to understand the rest of the cast in this game, certain aspects of her style start to hold her back a little bit compared to other character choices, with the biggest issue that she has being the lack of a consistent weak point gauge exposing move, which is the tool in most other characters' kits that allow them to speed up their damage dealing capabilities dramatically. Even with a few dim spots here or there, there are still things that Impa can do that no other characters can, and her ability to rack up special attack charge in seconds and then unleash a series of pre-animated attacks that your enemies simply cannot do anything to stop is nothing else but devastating. On top of all this, I really just have to say that her playstyle is a lot of fun. So, what are your thoughts on Impa? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, and if there was anything big that I missed, go ahead and drop that down below as well. As always, thank you so much for watching everybody, and I hope to see you next time. Special thanks to my top patrons DW7 Still Rules, Henry Gutierrez, Javier Castillo, Radiant Archiver, Ryan Poe, and True Tactician, as well as to all my other patrons. Thank you all very much.